The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, it's the kickoff to season six. We're going to go over how you can grow asparagus successfully on your property, as well as plants you should never buy at your garden center. Our guest is new author, Masilla Deliana, and we'll answer your garden questions. And it all starts next. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. I am your host, Joy Baird, along as my, beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look a, look a, bit, a little bit greener, as well as preserving what you grow. So happy that you have decided to join us today, and welcome to the new stations that are listening to us now we are on 18 am and fm frequencies across the united states happy you're listening to us whether you're listening to us on the radio through a radio app through uh, our parent website which is the wisconsin vegetable gardener.com under this season six tab at the top of the page podcast replay in studio video replay or however else you're capturing the program thank you so much if you want to be part of the program and we encourage participation you can do that in two very simple ways. One, you can send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or, and, and just say hi. If you, have, if you don't have a question, just let us know where you're listening from. Or if you'd like to uh, give us a ring-a-ding-ding on your mobile device, you can certainly do that. Giving us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. And that number is 1-800-927-7469. Or easier to remember, 1-800-927-SHOW. Holly, what is Proclamation Goods? Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Dual Cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. If it's, it's two pans and with the versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. Proclamation Goods. All right. Well, you come tuned in the program wherever you're listening to us. We're going to get into the program and discuss... Growing asparagus, Holly, most people may, well, you're going to start a garden where you're going to plant. Asparagus is not at the top of, the, probably the top 10 list of things or items that they just, they would say, I want this in my garden. And sometimes people grow asparagus because it was accidentally planted there, or was planted there by a previous homeowner, and now they have asparagus. Well, and once they figure out what it is. Right. Sometimes, you know, it may be mowing it over. What is this toxic weed that I've got? Uh, in the in the backyard. Well, not toxic, but maybe they're well, just like, well, they what don't is know. This? They don't right. know. Yeah, right. And so, I did want to say, well, yes. welcome back. Yeah, yeah, welcome back. Season six, we are rocking and rolling all the way through uh, October. Uh, two new stations. We've picked up uh, the word out of Cleveland, twelve twenty a.m. and ninety six point nine FM, as well as my old stomping ground, St. Louis area, uh, AM five ninety. The fan. Welcome uh, those who are listening down there and everybody who is listening, who's returned and new listeners that uh, you don't even know who we are. You've stumbled upon us through social media posts or uh, uh, promos that you've heard on the station here. So thank you very much. And uh, asparagus, huh, uh, Holly? Yeah. So asparagus take. This is a commitment now. It's a commitment. Yeah. So this is a long, a long game. If you're planning on moving. This ain't the crop to put in the ground. Well, you could, but it might get torn up by the next people. Right. Um, so this is a long, a long game plant. But it's a perennial, which means it comes back year after year. It's one of the perennial vegetables that are out there. And um, you can harvest after what is the third year. It's, it technically takes five years from seed to, to plant, but most people don't grow it directly from seed. They grow it from the crowns. And you can purchase one-year or two-year crowns. Obviously, the two-year crowns a little more costly, but you get the harvest quicker. 
Right. So you can, yeah, you can purchase the crowns. Um, asparagus, you know, if you're in the store, you're like, why? It's usually not exactly like the cheapest vegetable as compared to something like green peppers or tomatoes. But there's only everywhere in the world, no matter where the asparagus is coming from, there's only an eight week window yeah. of harvest. Now, and, and we we see asparagus in the grocery store year, you know, basically year round. But again, they're coming from all over the world in order to uh, to provide that consistent asparagus that you're seeing. But asparagus is exciting because it's typically the first fresh vegetable itself. Oh, it's hardy. Well, right, but it's typically the first fresh vegetable itself right. you'll see at a like at a farmer's market, right, or a farm stand. So that's that's exciting, or in your yard. So um, mature plants they grow about sixteen spears. A season. So one plant is going to give you 16 spears. That's another reason why it's kind of a delicacy. Right. Now, when you get a crown, if you're getting, a, that would what we would advise, if you're going to uh, work with asparagus, get a two-year crown. And you can you plant it, you spread the root system out. It looks like a giant spider. And each one of those root systems, uh, roots, produces the spheres that you are uh, that you'll harvest. Yeah, so you're gonna get a plant that has these this like clump of like stringy roots essentially. Uh -huh. And so what you want to do is you don't want to just like toss the roots into the soil and okay, that's good enough. You want to actually dig kind of a trench. Take the roots. It, the trench only has to be like I don't know what four to six inches deep ish. Uh, probably yeah. yeah. All based on the so type of uh, root system you got. Yeah. And then you want to take and you want to spread it out. So you want to take those roots and you'll see that there's literally like a crown at the top and at the bottom you want to spread those roots nice and wide and open and whenever you do this um you want to get it from a reputable source you just don't want to uh get this you get your crowns and you can get them at jung seed and if you want to save a little bit on your purchase you can use code 10 tg22 at jungseeds.com and you want to make sure that they do come up because you plant them this year, this spring, you will see them begin to grow. We had this problem a couple of years ago. We got them from our local independent garden center. They had been at their local, at their local independent garden center for quite some time. The roots had were dead in the box and we planted them. And a month later, nothing happened. So we investigated and we, out of the 10 that we bought, I think one had grown and you called you called that garden center, and they said, oh, just, you're, you, you're, basically, you don't know what you're talking about. Let them grow some more. And you used the card, because we always have, quote, unquote, the card that we play. You said, I have a National Garden Talk radio show. I know if things are growing or not. Oh, okay, well, bring them in, and we'll get you a refund. That right. was their answer. Right. And, so, I, and, and if it was just somebody else, they, they wouldn't have believed. And we don't even know who this person was. It was like a garden center yeah. person. So it could have been like my, you know, my high school cousin or I don't have a yeah. high school cousin, yeah. but it could have been somebody's high school cousin working the garden center during the summer. So anyway, um, it takes it. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to keep these in full sun. And, and as Joy had mentioned, the reason why we're talking about it now is because if you do decide to get crowns, you're going to plant these right away, right away. As soon as the, the soil can be worked, chisel them in, yeah, ch chisel them in. And then you want to just just leave them, but you want full sun and you want to avoid a high traffic area. You want to think about, OK, this is going to be here for 20 years and this is going to be their spot because you're not going to dig them up and move them. And you heard that right. 20 year. These things will last between 20 and 50 years. Back home, there was an adjacent farm to us and they had asparagus that was there for every bit of 20 plus years. And I remember harvesting uh, that. And if you've never had I mean, we've all probably had asparagus from the grocery store, but it's a whole different experience when you have grown it your own or you got it at the farmer's market, which was harvested probably six hours before you purchased it or 12 hours maximum. Very, very different and much, much better. Right. So, yeah, so you want to do the, the uh, think about where you're going to plant them. And then you want to do make sure that the soil is well draining because mm -hmm. if your soil, if it's an area that the soil pools or puddles, those roots are going to rot. Clay, clay soil is not the uh, area in which you want to plant asparagus at all. And you want to, I, you will see people on video and articles about growing asparagus in containers, the size of you know, half a whiskey barrel. Don't do it. It's not 
worth the effort and the headache in which to you just put it in the ground. If you can't put it in the ground, support your local farmer's market and buy it there. And one thing I would recommend is definitely um, plant or mulching around. So once you get them planted in, you want to mulch around. And you also want to kind of mark, make sure you know where, where they're going to come up because you might – you know, in the next spring, they're not coming up. And they're all weeds. They're all weeds. <laughs> we'll just mow that area down. And, yeah. You know, oh, that was the asparagus. So we put some uh, PVC piping. Um, what, what three inch you, tall. Three inch tall. And just to mark just each to plant mark, yeah. as they come up. Yeah. And then and then it's kind of fun, like a little game. Oh, this is coming up. So I think we can harvest this year, right? It will be close. We can get something off of it this year. Yeah, it won't be much, but we will be able to harvest something. And the fun fact about asparagus for the day is it can grow six inches in one day. Yeah, that's a lot. That's crazy amount. So you definitely don't want some for, some fourth graders don't grow that fast. <laughs> you want to keep in mind though that because you know that now, don't think. Well, I'm gonna wait because I love asparagus. I'm gonna wait till I get the you tallest can't. asparagus because nope. you... it's gonna get woody and tough and just not be. Delicious. Might as well eat a limb off the tree if you're gonna do that <laughs> because they, you can't get through it. Like an it, elk. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. work. Well, growing asparagus, if you've never done it and you have the capabilities and you're the commitment that you're gonna stay where you're at for years, it's definitely something we wish we would have done it 10 years ago. Oh, for sure. Uh, we wish we would have done it 10 years ago. So, with that said, uh, Walton's. Walton's is a proud supporter of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show, Holly. Yeah, we are brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's. Listen, folks, we know you care about where your food comes from. Canning and preserving your fruits and vegetables is great. But what about the meat? At waltonsinc.com, you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Do you want to make snack sticks that people actually like? Walton's created meatjuststicks.com. And, and, and you can make them as spicy or as plain as you want. Yeah. That's important. Yes. Yes. Um, We've all been there. Hey, try this. Your face burns off and everybody laughs. Oh, you don't like spicy stuff. Especially for your, your loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can you know, ruin a Thanksgiving like that, can't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll keep the house warm. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, anyway, continue. And if meatjuststicks.com is an informational site to help you make the best finished product, Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, and sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's, everything but the meat. Use code GROW22 to save 10% of orders of $50 or more to get free shipping. Yeah, that's GROW22 at checkout. Save 10% on your order of $50 or more and get that free shipping. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're just getting started. When we come back, the conversation is going to be about plants you should never buy at your garden center. You're listening to The Garden with Joey and Holly, radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Protect your outdoor furniture, fire pits, grills, and more with custom covers from CoversAndAll.com. Springtime means you don't know what the weather is going to do. Rain, sun, snow, ice, maybe everything in 48 hours. Covers and All's durable custom covers protects against it all. They've got a bunch of fabrics to choose from, and each one can be customized to fit any style, size, or shape to keep your outdoor furniture looking brand new year-round. Visit them at CoversAndAll.com and use code GARDEN. 25 at checkout to save 25% off your purchase. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. This week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit DrZymes.com forward slash garden talk. Starting seeds early indoors helps get a jump start on the season. Indoor growing or seed starting can often create an insect problem such as mites, thrifts, aphids, and fungal gnats. When combating these, the amazing Dr. Zymes is the tool for you. Just by using the Eliminator three days in a row, then once weekly, continue until you see no more signs of pests, also can be used as a soil drench. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the time of harvest, and does not leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. 
Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzines.com forward slash garden talk. Take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. Straw Bell Gardening is all the rage. Get your bell started easily with the Bell Buster Straw Bell Conditioning Formula. This is the only product that has been specifically formulated for use in straw bell gardening. Each unit contains 250 million colony forming units of trichoderma, fungi, and bacillus bacteria in addition to the fertilizer itself produces fantastic results with a bountiful production of vegetable crops start with the best to get the best traditional or organic formula take the guesswork out of conditioning your straw bell go to bellbuster.com to find out more thanks for listening to the garden with joe and holly radio show as you've heard through the program many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products if you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for hanging out with us today, taking part of your day to be with us. Holly, a lot of people have problems with watering. Either they overwater or they underwater, but Tree Diaper fixes all of that for them. Yeah, Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system with that with slow, it slowly releases water around the base of any tree or plant as the soil dries. It's filled with water from rain or when you water it, and it slowly releases that water over three weeks. There's no more guessing. If it's over watering, underwatering, tree diaper just kind of knows it releases that water at a proper at a proper rate. So you don't need any pipes, hoses, or electricity. You can water your plants or trees wherever they are. And it also works under mulch. Whether you're a first time gardener or advanced, tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA, you can find all the sizes they have available at treediaper.com. That's treediaper.com. Uh, we used it last year. That was the only reason we had butternut squash and spaghetti squash was because the tree diaper was used in those beds. Yeah, we got some beautiful squash because of that. So let's talk about it. right. Most people, if not, we're just a few weeks away for many of us across the country in the northern portions getting to our garden center. But there's some things you need to know about your garden center before you just go buy a bunch of plants. We're going to talk about things in which you should never buy at your garden center. You think, but a garden center has everything. It's always healthy, happy. Everything's great. They, can, they don't have any. Well, we're going to enlighten you on a few things here. It's called point of purchase. Yeah. And it's there when you're excited and you're on a shopping high. We've done this. We've done this. And you're like, Why I got you, these good deals. But where are you going to put seven geraniums at? Listen, yeah, we have seven geraniums. I understand that. We still don't know where we're putting them. <laughs> Sitting in the kitchen window for years they're and containing. I know they're. Not, anyway, this that's not the point of this conversation. Don't be talking about the geraniums. So there's a number of plants at, uh, you don't want to purchase at your garden center, whether you have an independent garden center in your town or in your city, or it's the big box garden center. These are things that you don't want either. It, it, it apl applies all the way across. So you never want to get a discolored or wilted plant. Now, you might think, why would I buy a discolored or wilted plant? Because you might be think you're Captain Save a Plant. Well, it's the last and one on the tray. It's the last one on the tray. And they just didn't water today. Right. So you, you're lying to yourself. Pass. Pass. So you, it's not your job to save the plants at the garden center. Take a drive down the road. Maybe you'll see somebody's discarded uh hanging basket you can try to save that plant we've done that too we have too 
Um, so yeah, not the discolored one. Plants with bugs. Now, a few bugs is fine, but if if you're looking at it and there's just like you all pick these it up and all of a sudden you get aphids, it, yeah, yeah, or you get hit in the face with a bunch of white flies mm-hmm. that infest it. Avoid that. Avoid that garden center because if it's on one plant, it's going to be on all the plants. It's not. They don't discriminate. Right. They. <laughs> Exactly, just like. But a few bugs, like you said, is good because the, it shows that they're not using harmful chemicals that kill everything. They may be using some chemicals, but a few bugs, okay, here and there, and it's an ecosystem balance thing going on there. Uh, stress plants. So this is a little bit different than discolored or wilted plants. Stress plants typically are a lot of times if you go up to a tomato plant and there's already tomatoes on it. Right. It, it's, it's June fifth. Yeah. yeah, June fifth. Nine plants for 54 cents, and they're like three foot tall in a four inch pot. I'm exaggerating, but not very far off. Right. And they've all, oh, I can get nine plants for a, a half, you know, 54 cents. I'll take them. In. No. Let me tell a little story. Okay, go. Okay. Story time here. Sure. So a few years ago, um, more than a few years ago, I worked for a flower supplier and I worked in the garden center. I, I stocked the flowers and watered them and whatnot. I did not work for the vegetable supplier, but the vegetable supplier would always put these tomato plants that look gorgeous. They were like in the the small containers, probably like a three gallon container pot. And they would put them on kind of near where people would drive by to pick up, um, you know, to do like pickups and stuff. Mm -hmm. And people would drive by, they would drive by to do their pickup or get their lumber or whatever. And they would say, wow, that tomato plant looks really good. I never worked past like June 1st Uh and we're in Wisconsin. So that tomato plant, yeah, it looked beautiful and it had tomatoes on it, but it wasn't July or August. Now, was this one of those big, tall, three foot uh, tomatoes in the cage that's like $35? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And people would buy them and you could tell that these people have never gardened before, possibly. Those are called the money beets. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That that vegetable supply. Office reference if if you're Mm -hmm. following along. Yes, and I mean, and there was people that would come in, and you could tell, especially like right around Mother's Day, they would buy the hanging basket that looked beautiful and gorgeous, and I knew because which was dead fourteen days later, right? And I knew that because um, our I don't we we grow flowers right, but our downstairs neighbor is also a flower gardener, and he has educated us on different things, and I knew that that plant was sold for a point of purchase, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, stress plants don't do that. And here is some vegetable starts in which you don't want to buy at your garden center, your big box nursery, simply because, and we'll graze over all of these pretty quick. One, any type of bean, bush bean, uh, gabonzo bean, uh, chickpea, uh, pole bean, because if you get the seeds, which is like two and a half, let's say two and a half to four dollars a pack, normal pack, whatever, you'll get 25 to 50 seeds in that pack, or you can get one or two bean plants in this four-inch container that are extremely root-sensitive, that when you transplant, you will probably kill it, or it won't It won't transplant very easily. Right. Put the 50 seeds in the ground, and within less than two weeks, you're going to have all those beans sprouting, or in your container. Right. Um, another one, as you said, is peas. Extremely touchy when you try to transplant. Yeah carrots pretty much any root crop i'm not sure why you would but we see these, these yeah, every I year i don't understand that beets uh, we see beets definitely corn same thing just plant in the ground and then vine crops what are you talking about like cucumbers cucumbers squash okay. uh all of these vine crops that you put in the ground put in the ground at the appropriate time typically two weeks to four weeks after your last average frost date. You can find that going to your favorite search engine, punching in your zip code and saying last average frost date. Uh, Cucumbers want it when the soil is at least 65 degrees warm. But you put them in the ground and within seven to 10 days, these things are sprouted. And studies have shown that if you take a transplant that of cucumber that's about two inches tall and plant it in the ground at the same time you plant the seed, in four weeks they're the same size. Right. Um, so I do want to mention yes. that you don't have to buy starts. No. No, absolutely not. If yeah, like... tell, tell your story. You didn't know what starts were until I met you. <laughs> no, I, I did not. So I. How's that possible? <laughs> I grew up in the city, and um, 
we every Memorial Day we would just toss our seeds in the ground and literally and the tomato seeds, no starch, no starch. Boom! This blows Joey's mind, and I don't know why because it was like a natural thing to me. That's how you planted stuff. You just put the seeds in the ground. I don't think we even bought. I don't. Maybe we bought flower starts. I think so. I'd have to ask my mom. But um, I know I know vegetable starts. We did not buy those. We just tossed the seeds in the ground. We had beautiful tomatoes and zucchini. Well, and when peas would, and be, when beans would you and, have like late August, early in in, in our zone? Uh, which is five a we five b. We would get all the the proper summer crops like in August. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but th- there's a couple advantages to starting the seeds. You get a healthier plant start. It's a less of a you know you don't have to wait as long type of thing. Um, but th- when you go to your garden center and we see this every year, you see beets, you see carrots, you see sweet corn in these four inch containers. Don't buy them ever. Save your money, buy a pack of seeds from Jung's or if you've got a, a favorite seed company and plant the, the pack of seeds, you're going to be far better off and the investment is going to be much more beneficial for you rather than trying to maneuver these seeds out of this four inch container and you're probably going to kill at least half. And then you're going to have to go back and buy more and it's a, an evil cycle. And these garden centers know that you're not supposed to and it's not recommended and you shouldn't be selling them, but they're kind of their mindset is we'll let the consumer decide what they want to do that's yes that's correct and again you know it's marketing it's point of purchase it's whatever so we're just telling that's you that's why to, we're here to help you right, save money we're here to help you save money and save yourself headache and frustration and buy the proper things to or look, that garden center yeah i mean not that you shouldn't support your local garden center but they are still a business and right that's every right of them to want to make some money and that's not necessarily even their fault. It might just be their supplier. Yeah. So they, and they got a contract, and they've got to provide what the con, what the supplier puts out. They just can't go. We don't want those plants. It's part of a package deal, and they don't have a say. So, just definitely, you know, don't get overexcited. Try to keep a, a calm mind, and um, buy what you know that is going to be best successful for you. Uh, any questions in regards to that? Garden Talk Radio Gmail dot com. We'll get an answer to your problem there. Well, Holly, soon it will be warming up and you want to make sure that you can enjoy your lawn without sharing it with beetles and grubs. Yeah, I'm excited because spring is just around the corner and it's time to start thinking about controlling beetles and grubs in your guard, garden or your yard. There's all sorts of Japanese beetle articles um, you know, about us here in the Midwest all the time. And you know, we want to lessen the impact those beetles have on our yard this summer. Phylum has an easy-to-use product. Yeah, Grub Gone can be applied to the turf or garden or around ornamentals to control grubs and lessen the impact that beetles have on your yard this summer. Easy to use. Apply with any commercial spreader or irrigate into the soil. Biologically, that specifically targets the grubs and beetle invaders without harming, without harming, Again, without harming beneficial insects like bees, butterflies, and ladybugs. And to be honest, it's the only non-chemical that works. Find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. You can use code GARDENTALK10 to save 10% off your order. And that's phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. When we come back, Masilla from YouTube channel Learn to Grow. Hey, she's a new author. We're going to talk about all that and her new book right after this. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. Chapin has the tools you need to water, feed, and protect your garden. We make equipment for lawn and garden care, and we are always innovating to help make your next growing season a success. Our newest products are the 5010 Rose Duster, watering tools including hose nozzles, sprinklers, and timers, the mixes on 
Exit Backpack Sprayer that mixes concentrate as you spray. You can find all products at www.chapinmfg.com, major online retailers, home improvement stores, and hardware stores near you. Ship Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Ship Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ChipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloomingeasyplants.com. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. Thanks for listening to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Join Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today. Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods and bring in our guest for this week. Masilla Dalayana is the host of Learn to Grow and the Crafty Mom on YouTube. She's a Pacific Northwest mother of four who is passionate about organic gardening, sustainable living, homesteading, and education. Her videos and social media posts consist of gardening, outdoor recreation, healthy living, crafts, science experiments, DIY projects, and delicious recipes. She's also the author of The Four Seasons Food Gardening. Welcome to the program, Masilla. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule, being a mom and being a YouTuber and an author, <laughs> uh, to enlighten not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country. I want to get into, we'll, we'll talk about your book in a moment, because I got some questions on that. We, uh, we want to ask you first, you grow 14 different kinds of mint. What are the challenges, number one, to growing mint? And what are some tips for growing mint? And how does one decide, three-part question, how does one decide okay. what mint to grow if you don't have the capabilities of growing 14 different kinds like you're, you are showing on some of your videos on YouTube? Well, okay. So um, I always like to grow uh, different varieties of plants. And so that's why I end up acquiring 14. But there are some challenges with growing mint because they are invasive and they spread by rhizomes, which are like underground stems that proliferate roots and grow more stems and they spread that way. So they can take over your garden. So mint is best kept in a container, which will allow them to spread and um, proliferate and while it's contained, so it won't take over an area of your garden. And now if you are growing more than one kind, it's best to plant them in their own pot because if they are grown together, they can eventually lose their distinctive aroma and flavors. So if, they're, if they grow together in one pot. Um, and mint will thrive in full, to part, full sun to part shade and it does well in moist soil while draining. And they're actually pretty cold hardy perennial herb all the way down to USDA zone five, but some varieties uh, are known to survive down to zone three. Now, whenever, if, if somebody has made the uneducated mistake of putting er, uh, mint in the actual physical ground, 
what is the, the way to get rid of it? Basically, like glyphosate, is that about the only answer? You know what? I, I, I've made that mistake. Okay. <laughs> and um, I, I don't use any herbicides uh-huh. or any um, type of chemicals in our garden. So we garden organically. So it took me about two years to eventually get rid of all the the rhizomes uh, and the roots by digging them out or digging them up. Right. But you have to find them before they start. They grow really quick too. So if you see any small mint plants and you don't want them there, you pull them all out. But you have to pull all the roots as well. What What are some of the flavors uh, or fr- uh, flavors of mint that you do have growing? I, we, we haven't talked about that specifically. Oh, gosh. Um, we have pineapple mint. We have the common ones such as spearmint. Uh, peppermint, chocolate mint, um, apple mint. That one smells really good. Ginger mint. <laughs> but I think my favorite one um, are the basic or the common ones, such, such as spearmint and chocolate mint. And I'm going to assume, much like basil, the name distinctly oh, mint. Uh, the the That's... the name distinctly refers to what it, if it's apple mint, it tastes like apples. Is is that what we're getting with? The apple mint, it has that um, reminiscence of apple, but it's also kind of minty. It's um, sweet, sweet um, smell and taste, like very mild. So it's really neat to have those different varieties. That's why I like growing them just for fun too, is because you get to smell them and taste them. (laughs) So I just, I'm just curious, what are you going to do with all of this mint? You know what? Um, I just like to grow them. Some of them are just for ornamental just to, you know, some of them have very beautiful foliage. Um, and we use, the, you can use them for tea, infused water. It's great to infuse honey. I dried the leaves first, so it flavors the honey. And I'm, I'm sure you guys know that mint also has medicinal properties. Right. So a lot of people, you know, yeah, use, uh, drink the tea or um, use the essential oil. Yeah. No, mint tea is is delicious and it's really oh, refreshing. Yes. So, yeah, yes, it I was is. just I was curious if you you know dried it and it sounds like you have a a myriad. I, of I uses do, yeah. For That's amazing. So we hear the term microclimate in your in um in your backyard, and mm-hmm. what what is a microclimate for those who are not familiar? So um, a microclimate actually exists not just in your backyard. So um, a microclimate is an area that's within a region with different weather or varying climate. So an example is where I live. So I'm in um, Washington state, but the west side, I am the western, the west side of Washington state is next to the Pacific Ocean. So that side is influenced by the ocean. So in the summers, our, our weather's cooler and in the winter it's also cooler than the east side of the Cascade Mountains, where it's usually warmer and dry in the summer and colder in the winter. So that's a, those are also microclimates in the bigger scale, but the microclimates in your garden would be your backyard if it's facing south. That's going to be warmer than what's on the north side of your house. Um, also, if you have a concrete wall, um, which is, um, or stones of pavement around your area, those are considered heat sinks, which absorb sunlight energy that would radiate the heat to its surrounding areas. So that would be a great microclimate to grow warm crops like peppers or tomatoes or uh, summer squash. Uh, great information there. I want to I want to talk about your book. Your book is Four Seasons sure. Food Gardening. Uh, I know people say you shouldn't buy a book because of the cover, but mm-hmm. just based on the title, everybody should pick this up just because of the uncertainty that we have with the food system now with a lot of different Um, what is what is something inspiring that uh, is in the book that would encourage our listeners to go get a copy so um, in four season food gardening I go over the basics so basic gardening information but also um, if people want to go in a realm of composting and incorporating perennial crops that will produce for many years once they are established I, I've listed some perennial crops in there that you can incorporate in your garden. Um, also go over cold climate techniques so you can extend your growing season. Just because it's fall or winter doesn't mean that you, can, you can't be harvesting crops because you can extend your season by using certain methods. 
And also the book is laid out by season that includes the different ways to grow, not just in in ground, but also in raised beds, in containers. So if someone has a small space, um, they can also grow in pots and um, or tower gardens. Um, also, I go over natural ways to growing organic food so you don't have to um, rely on chemical fertilizers and um, also to grow organic food and so you could be um, be sustainable and um, be efficient in gardening. Great. So um, we are talking with Masilla Delayana. We see that you grow elephant garlic, which is not quite garlic. We grow hard neck garlic, and then there's also the soft neck variety. What is the difference between real real garlic and elephant garlic? And is there one you prefer to grow over the other? So we grow both, and we love to have them both. Um, elephant garlic is actually not a true garlic. So it's more mild. It's got a mild onion garlic flavor, and it's actually closely related to the leek. Um, now it, it, it does resemble a garlic because of the, it's a bulbous, um, you know, bulb like a garlic, um, but it doesn't have the same pungent uh, taste as the garlic. Now, um, elephant garlic is actually, um, a great crop to grow because, um, you can actually grow it as a perennial, essentially both actually garlic and elephant garlic are perennial plants. If you allow them to, um, proliferate and leave some bulbs in the ground, they will um, eventually sprout the next season and they can be divided. The cloves can be divided and replanted in late winter if you like, or you can just let them be and allow them to proliferate. And um, what's great about elephant garlic is that they shoot out a flower stalk and those are excellent for attracting pollinators and they are beautiful. They're the um, globe shaped um, a flower that's actually florets in the globe, it's like the rest of the all allium flowers, like that. Um, such it kind of looks like a the chives, right. except it's yeah. a big, yeah, much it's like bigger, a, much bigger globe of florets. Yeah, it's purplish, beautiful. Usually like a purplish, pinkish. Yeah. Kind of yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that's why we we like to grow both. Um, obviously we we use them for eating as well. But um, we love to grow them as perennial, uh, in a perennial patch. So that way we always have them in, in the garden year round. Good information. Now we talked about microclimates. We got a lot of new gardeners that listen to us and mm -hmm. a lot of new gardeners over the last couple of years because of world events. Um, yes. What, what are growing zones and what does that mean? How does one apply okay. a growing zone to their world in, in, in the garden? How does that work? So, okay, the growing zone, so that was curated by the U.S. Um, agriculture, and it's, a, it's divided into 13 zones by the minimum an annual average temperature. So if you have a higher zone number, um, that, that climate will most likely have higher temperatures, where a lower, lower zone numbers will have lower temperatures and it's colder. So the hardiness zone determines if a plant will survive in your climate. So it's mainly useful for perennial crops. So for instance, if you were to go shopping and you're looking for a perennial plant, you'll want to make sure that you choose a variety and it specifies the growing zone that it's adapted to. Um, now the growing zones usually do not apply to annual crops because they are grown in one season. Good information. Mm. Makes sense. But I mean, people, and, and, and we ask that, Masila, because mm -hmm. there's people that see these maps and go, what does that yeah. mean? It, it's pretty, <laughs> but I don't know what it means. It gets confusing. Yes. Yeah. Right. So um, we've really enjoyed having you on the show. And I, I just want to let you know, I, I enjoy watching your, your reels or your TikToks. Your, they're, uh, they're very entertaining and, and educational at times, too. Um, how do people find out more about you, your social media, and then also, um, mm -hmm. you know, how to get your book and things like that? So I am on Instagram, uh, Learn to Grow. I also upload on YouTube every couple of weeks. Um, also Facebook and, like I said, on TikTok. And um, they can order or pre-order my book right now through Amazon.com um, and other um, book retailers online. 
Well, we encourage our listeners to check the book out. It's definitely going to be worth the value and the education that you need in order to have a successful garden, not only this year, but for years to come, and makes a great gift. Yes. Masilla, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered Holly and myself, and, and we thank you very much for that. Thank you so much for having me again. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's your garden questions, our garden answers. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Introducing the Johnny Appleseed Authentic Algeo Apple Tree, grafted from the last known surviving tree planted by the real Johnny Appleseed. The Johnny Appleseed Authentic Algeo Apple Tree was shepherded through nearly 200 years of American history by a family of rural Ohio farmers. Now you can grow this one-of-a-kind heirloom tree right in your own backyard. Order your tree today at shopjohnnyappleseed.com. That's shopjohnnyappleseed.com. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com, use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Spring is around the corner, folks, and Algae Men reminds you that this year, when it's time for spring cleaning, don't forget about the outside of your house. Algae Men is southeastern Wisconsin's go-to for exterior cleaning, including roofs, siding, decks, and concrete. So if you spot ugly black stains or green splotchy stuff on your home, let Algae Men get rid of it for you. We can restore the area back to its original look, not only in a timely manner, but also at an affordable cost. For a free estimate, visit us today at algemen.com. Algemen, we clean areas that you don't want to. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's rootmaker.com. The Water Hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush, conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The Water Hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. Carpenter bees cause costly structural damage to wood siding, decks, doors, eaves, and railings. Our solution is Trapstick from Rescue. It catches carpenter bees all season long. Trapstick uses no pesticides. Carpenter bees are in enticed by colors and pattern and get stuck on the adhesive. Save your wood structures from damage from carpenter bees with Trapstick from Rescue. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular Rescue Fly and Yellow Jacket Traps. Learn more at CarpenterBeeControl.com. That's CarpenterBeeControl.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zine, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Join Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us. A lot of great information packed into this show. And it's time for your questions, our answers. If you've got a question, you can submit it over to us at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's email, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Make it very simple for you. Otherwise, you can give us a ring-a-ding-ding on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. 
Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with the versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. And the number is 800-927-7469. Yep, 1-800-927-7469, 1-800-927-SHOW, uh, proclamation.com. Uh, so, Holly, uh, we've got a number of questions that came in this week. We're just going to go through as many as we can get to till the top of the hour. Uh, let's see here. Is there a ratio of soil to seed for the depth? Meaning how deep do I plant seeds? Is there a basic rule to go by? So you want to plant it twice the depth of the seed. So if the seed is one, like a half of an inch tall, uh -huh. you would plant that seed one inch deep. Okay. So something like really, really tiny seeds, like carrot seeds, radish seeds, et cetera, you can kind of broadcast them, and then you would just sprinkle a little bit of soil on top. Right. Now, each seed package is going to identify the proper depth, but this is a good rule. If you use this, you're not going to have any problem. Twice the depth of, the, of what the seed is. Good, good to know there. All right, uh, next one. Do I really need grow lights to start seeds indoors? No. However, investing in good grow light makes the difference in having the right light spectrum and wavelength, like Happy, D, Happy Leaf LED grow lights allows you to plants to have the correct and right amount of light. Shop lights, tube lights, yeah, they work, but you, they get weaker over time. So if you don't want to invest in grow lights, you want to look into growing primarily if you can in a south-facing window, otherwise a west-facing window, or if that doesn't work, then an east-facing window, and then a north-facing window, you probably do want to invest in grow lights. Now, we've done it in a, a west-facing window for a number of years. It worked good, but when we transitioned and the Happy Leaf LED grow lights, uh, we transitioned to them. Now, it is an investment. Any good grow light is an investment. You can get the old cheaper ones you bought on sale. It's a big box store, the tube lights. Uh, but they're only providing a, uh, about half to three quarters, uh, not even enough light, fraction of the amount of light your plants are actually desperately needing. Happy Leaf has that spectrum uh, figured out and provides more light than the plant needs, basically, and that's why the plants are so lush and, and uh, vi uh, vibrant. Uh, you can use coupon code Joey Holly to save 10% off your orders of $90 or more if you're going to buy a Happy Leaf LED grow light there. Um, and, and we would, and they're made in America. And, um, you know, if you've listened to this program any length of time, we're not going to tell you to invest your money in something that is junk. Right. We've got three and we're going to get more because they truly work and they do a phenomenal job. We, we really like them a lot. Um, so I had a shout out. Yes. Uh, one of my friends that I've known since high school said that they've been gardening for a while and they had decided they wanted to grow, uh, sweet potatoes, so okay. they're planning for that, and they they were pleased and delighted that they when they went to search YouTube for growing sweet potatoes in Wisconsin that our videos came up first. All right. So, all right, if I grow strictly in a greenhouse, are there special seeds, quote greenhouse seeds, that I should purchase? Now, uh, people may snicker at this question, but it is a, it's a very valid question. And the answer is no and yes. And I say that as being there is no specific category of greenhouse seeds in which you can purchase. However, there are seeds that are uh, a dwarf or many, many variety, miniature size, uh, door, a tiny Tim Tomato, um, tiny Tom Peas. They get a very small size uh, and produce very heavily. Um, there is what's called a uh, a patio, I think it's patio container corn. There's even like the bush cucumbers. Bush cucumbers yeah. instead of vine. And these are heirloom variety as well as hybrid variety. So it's a, you can get the best of both worlds there. But there are seeds that you can purchase that can be grown, not, maybe not even in a greenhouse, but in a very small compacted garden too outdoors. So it, it, it works both ways, and, and there you just have to look for the compact or the dwarf varieties of these plants. 
Right. So the next question we had was, can I plant store-bought potatoes or do I really need seed potatoes? So this is like a yes, yes, no answer. Right. Um, the organic store-bought will work if you know the variety that will help you know the time of harvest and and how long how long till harvest. So harvesting potatoes usually takes between 70 and 30 days. 70 and 130 days. I'm sorry, 70 and 130 days. I said 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't know the variety, that's okay too. You want to definitely make sure that they sprout, that they sprout the little uh, sprouts. The eyes. The eyes. Uh, if, you, if you've if you purchased any type of potatoes uh, from a, a grocery store or an organic store, by the time you get them out of the car and home, they're already sprouting, essentially. Um, I'm, I'm joking about that, but you're not too far off. About a week or two in a warm area, they're going to start sprouting. You and, and some of you may have purchased potatoes from a big grocery store, and they never have sprouted. They sit there, and they make it a little green, but they never sprout. And why is that? Because a lot of them have growth inhibitors. A chemical. A chemical on, on them. And there's nothing there's nothing wrong with whatever potatoes you choose to buy. But you will notice that the organic ones, especially if you keep them in a warm area, they are, they are going to sprout. And then the ones that have been sprayed with a growth inhibitor, like Joey said, they'll get shriveled and <laughs> possibly green, but they typically won't sprout. So. And... and- People think that if a potato in which they have bought that's of organic uh, quality, if it sprouts in the kitchen, it's inedible. That's simply not the case. Just knock the eyes off and go ahead. And if you want to feel like peeling is better, it's totally edible. It just shows that it's a very healthy potato. And and you can buy them. And yeah, see, you you can purchase them if you have potatoes that are sprouting in your kitchen when the soil temperature is a minimum of 45 degrees at root zone, typically six inches below surface uh, of the soil. You can put them in preferably 50 degrees uh, and you'll be fine. And you can cut the potato and having uh, the eyes on it, two eyes the size of a chicken egg, uh, or you can leave the whole potato. Studies, university extension offices have done studies and showed whether you've divided the potato or you put the whole potato in, you're going to get the same amount of harvest. The only advantage to splitting the potato is you stretch the plant, a few more plants down the row. So, yeah, yeah you can go either way. Uh, question here, Holly. Can you grow rutabagas in the spring? How soon? I uh, just got some seeds, and it would be awesome if I could do that. I've often heard that rutabagas are only really a quote-unquote fall crop. Can you help me? Yeah, you can grow those rutabagas in the spring. You would want to plant them as soon as the soil warms up enough in your area, which means as soon as the soil is able to be worked and you can grow them in the spring, they take, is it 90 days? 90 days. Yeah, so they take 90 days till you can harvest them, and it is a, a possible thing. Now, we have um, we have never, we've out of like four or five times in which we have tried to grow rutabagas in the spring, we've had like one really good harvest. All the other times they have gotten stunted and they've went to seed or they've they've, uh, bolted. So we have found that in zone 5A here, growing them or planting them the first weekend of August typically gives us a really good harvest because rutabagas and turnips, which take 60 days, rutabagas take 90, they are a cool loving crop, a cool loving root crop. And as the August days get through the nights are getting colder the days are getting shorter and the ground is getting chillier and that is what the rutabagas thrive on so you, we've get we get really good rutabagas and really good turnips because that cold temperatures are starting to develop at night the days are getting shorter and then we harvest about a little uh, past the end of October early November right before our ground freezes we'll go ahead and harvest whether we're at 90 days or not so uh makes a it's, so it's something to, I would keep, encourage something you, to keep in mind that don't expect that you plant them now that you're going to have a wonderful harvest. If you are, if this is your first time growing rutabagas, you maybe you want to try some in the spring and then some in the fall. Yeah, do a double crop. See what happens. Yeah. Well, with that, that means we are out of time and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the show today or want to revisit it? A couple of ways in which you can do such. You can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Radio Season 6 tab at the top of the page. Holly, we are a Season 6 of this radio show that we have done all by ourselves, which is pretty cool thanks to the sponsors. Um, Or you can send us an email to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com, and we will send you the link to this program. 
Uh, and you can check out past shows and over 2,200 garden videos on our website. Tune in next week on the program when we will be going over starting seeds indoors, which you need to know as well as cool season crops. We just talked about two of them, rutabagas and turnips. And our guest will be our good friend and author, Jessica Walliser. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.